Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. And so I hope that you're all having a really wonderful day thus far. And so, of course, in this video, as you saw in the thumbnail and the title, we'll be talking mainly about uh, the latest prediction for the hurricane season, which is from AccuWeather. So we'll be looking at all that they highlight or some of the main points that they've highlighted in terms of what is expected uh, and what could determine the activity this hurricane season. And so before I go into details, please. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, and so as usual, but let's start off with a view of what is happening right now across the Western Atlantic. And we can see that in the Caribbean, we've got some activity in the northeastern section. Uh, we've got some of those clouds uh, potentially bringing some rainfall to some of those islands. But as we drift further toward the west, we can see that there's a lot less activity. So overall, nothing too major at this time. And it's quite windy as well. We've got that high pressure that is helping to induce uh, some of those stronger winds across sections of the Caribbean and so nothing major anticipated as we're going to be progressing into the next couple of days and let's now move on to what AccuWeather has predicted and so here is the outlook so last year in 2022 there were 40 named storms eight hurricanes and two major hurricanes four of which directly impacted the U.S. and note that uh, it's not just the continental U.S. but also the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. The U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico are also included. And then for the 30-year average, this is the number of named storms, hurricanes, and majors considered average. 40 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. And then uh, we can see that for the 2023 forecast, they are predicting ranges here. 11 to 15 named storms, of which 4 to 8 could acquire hurricane status, and 1 to 3 major hurricanes. Direct U.S. impacts around 2 to 4 tropical cyclones and so last year of course it wasn't it was a la nina season however uh wind shear and abundant hiring dust helped to weaken and prevent uh development of many systems that would have become tropical cyclones so last year was fairly an average hurricane season and the first season to produce this little activity in a la nina so uh that was what happened last year and then this year of course they're expecting somewhat of a below average to a uh, slightly above average hurricane season. Okay, and so they've highlighted. Uh, other factors such as the what happens during an El Nino. So of course it is forecasted that we could possibly enter El Nino conditions later this year and what this does is, us uh, is usually results in an increase in those upper level winds that wind shear and that would typically affect tropical cyclones that are trying to develop. However in the eastern Pacific there is typically more activity so uh, that's typical of an El Nino year. So let's activity over in the Atlantic Basin and more activity over in the Eastern Pacific. And then what determines the track of tropical cyclones each year? Now that is the job of mainly the Bermuda High. Now this is a prevalent high pressure system across the North Atlantic and so uh, sometimes it is weaker and sometimes it is stronger. So the first thing to remember is that high pressure systems in the northern hemisphere rotate in a clockwise direction. That is how winds rotate. And so those winds are what carry tropical cyclones you can think of it as that so uh, when we have a stronger high pressure system it's going to result in tropical cyclones being steered more into the Caribbean and eventually up to the Gulf Coast of the U.S. and then moving inland. However, with a weaker high, uh, storms will typically stay offshore and just be fish storms. And so that is the influence that it has and that is going to be the determinant of where the tropical cyclones that develop this hurricane season will head to. And so the main factor that aids in the development of tropical cyclones is of course warm sea or ocean surface waters and so uh, currently there are above average temperatures especially in the Gulf of Mexico so uh, there is a chance that we could see pre-season development and 
last year broke that streak because since 2015 up until 2021, that's seven years of preseason activity, which simply means that there is tropical cyclone development before the official start of the hurricane season. But that didn't happen last year. However, there is a chance that we could see that happen this year because uh, when we have some of those systems moving from the U.S., uh, especially off the southeastern coast, once we have those favorable waters, uh, usually of at least 26 degrees Celsius or higher, that could help to induce some development. And so guys, uh, the World Meteorological Organization is currently meeting this week and so uh, we will know soon which name or names is or are retired from last hurricane season. But as I said in my previous update, I think that the only name that will be retired is Ian. So uh, of course I'm going to be keeping you guys updated as time goes by and that is pretty much it for this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be weather-wise.